There are two ways, the way of life and the way of death, and there is a great difference between these two ways. So opens history's first Christian guidebook, a book that more of us should know about and most of us have never heard of. A book so old, it predates several books in the New Testament. That's the opening. Nice. Now first up, some words on the pronunciation. The correct pronunciation, or the most accepted English pronunciation of this book is Didache. This is good, this is correct, and you can use this term. The other general pronunciation in the English language is didakia, which is closer to the original pronunciation. You can use that too. What you shouldn't do, and what I recommend you don't do, is copy the version of pronunciation that I use when my more learned, biblically scholarly friends aren't around. When they're not around, and I'm just talking about it, I call it the didac. This is completely incorrect, and if you want to be taken seriously, don't ever call it the didac, it's didache. I just think didac sounds cooler, it sounds like how it should be pronounced based on how it's written, and uh, I like it, but don't do it. Didache. Anyway, the didac is a very old Christian text. It was written in the first century for the Jewish Christians and compiles segments of the Gospels, wisdom of the Twelve Apostles, and some parts of what we now call the Old Testament into one small handy text. It's written very early on in Christian history. It borrows liberally from the texts of Matthew and Luke, implying that these books are in good circulation, but doesn't appear to have anything from the Gospel of Mark and has no mention at all of the Gospel of John. And despite being written for Jewish Christians, it doesn't remotely mention the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, implying that this book was written sometime before the year AD 70. Now that's before the Gospel of John, that's before the book of Revelation, it might be before the book of Mark, and it might be before some of Paul's letters, who knows? It's likely to have even been written just after the completion of the Gospel of Matthew. So the obvious question first, if it's this old, why isn't it in the Bible? The general criteria for a book to meet, to be in the New Testament, was that it had to be written by eyewitnesses of the resurrection, it had to be historically used by the church, and had to be consistent with the theology that had been preserved by the church. This book meets all the criteria for a New Testament book, you would think. And for many of the early centuries of the church, the church fathers did consider it part of the New Testament, and it was referred to as the wisdom of the Twelve Apostles. Put simply, the reason it didn't make it into your New Testament is because it was a manual. The books of the New Testament are generally books of theology, books to be used in worship, in church, whereas the Didache presents a lot of practice for Christians to do. The Didache doesn't hold anything deeply theological or new or unusual that isn't in the other texts of the New Testament. It isn't really a worship text, it is a practical guide. Some biblical scholars today kind of wish it had have been included in the New Testament. Maybe it wouldn't have hurt, and it would have been in there with a list of instructions that might have prevented a lot of the arguments and debates and discussions that have plagued the Protestant Western world in the last few centuries. Remember that while it was not included in the New Testament, it was still considered authoritative and read widely in the early church, quoted widely, and is still read and used by many Christians around the world to this day. The book is very short and very easy to read. We're going to put up a free ebook in the description on YouTube below so that you can download and have a look at it. It won't take you very long to get through. And it's worth reading because you get to experience something of what the early church did in the first century, and we owe a lot to the Christians of that first century. The book opens up with a few practical guide steps to being a Christian. Much of it is in the Gospels. Bless those who curse you, turn the other cheek, do to others, things like that. Then it has a list of sins to avoid. And the interesting one to point out here is that there is a very, very clear prohibition on abortion. While some people in the modern world try to work around this topic in scripture, in the Didache it is very clearly forbidden. And so it's very evident that the Christian church has always been against abortion and this is not a new discussion for us. It's something we've been involved with since we started. There are some more uh, instructions on how not to sin, stuff like that. There is a short, interesting little section on baptism. It recommends doing baptism in running water, but gives a few allowances if you can't access running water. And it says that baptisms must be done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This practice continues across the Christian world to this day. It makes a deal of fasting. It talks about that the world around them fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the Christians have started fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesday is the day Jesus was betrayed. Friday is the day that he was crucified. This practice of Wednesdays and Fridays fasting is still preserved in the Eastern Orthodox Church to this day. You basically turn vegan two days a week. 
Then, the Didache recommends praying the Lord's Prayer at least three times a day. This is still practiced by many Christians around the world today, and it shows how quickly and how early this prayer was being used and loved by the early church. Communion is mentioned, and it's very clear from the very first century that it was seen as far more than just a symbol. There is a real weight and value to this. Communion, it is said, is only allowed for the baptized believers, and this practice continues in Orthodoxy and Catholicism to this day, as well as several other traditional Christian groups. It also says in the Didache that Christians are to gather together every single Sunday, and they're also to make confession before they take communion. That practice is preserved in both the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholic Church to this day. Something that I thought was fairly sweet in the Didache was a sort of instruction on how to set boundaries. Because the Christians are loving everyone and giving so much to everyone and just being really nice, the Didache gives a few rules on how not to be taken advantage of, basically. That if you are a Christian and you're being looked after by a Christian family, you have to contribute to them. You can't just take, you have to give. And it makes that really clear. Christianity is a collaborative thing we are supposed to be working together. The text also goes on to talk about giving. We are to give to the poor and we are to give to those in ministry. And it also gives us some ideas of what to look for in people in ministry and what kind of things someone in the ministry should be doing in their personal character. And finally, the Didache ends with a short segment on watchfulness, to remain ever ready for the imminent return of Jesus Christ, which could happen at any moment. So that's the Didache. That is a glimpse of what Christianity looked like for our forebears in the first century. And it's exciting to see how much of the first century Christianity is still present and evident in our faith. And it might be a surprising book for some people. We have a perhaps understandable idea that the early church was rather disorganized and maybe a bit chaotic in the tumultuous environment in which it was started. The Didache shows that it wasn't, and right from the very beginning that things were organized and had care on how to live as Christians. Remember that many of the people reading this book had met Jesus. They were the kind of people that would gather together and tell stories of conversations they had with Jesus. It is widely believed that much of this book has been written by members of the Twelve Apostles, people that had spent years with Jesus. It was seen as important to these early Christians that had met Christ to build structures and systems in place to be able to preserve that relationship with him. And thanks to them, the church grew exponentially in that first century. They were at a pivotal point in our history. It is thanks to them that the church continued to grow and that all of us can have an opportunity to be part of that relationship with Christ and that relationship with the church that they had in that first century. The tea today is orange and cinnamon, is it? And it tastes kind of Christmassy, a little bit strange. I feel like it belongs at Christmas, but it's not bad. Um, and yeah, again, reminder, check in the YouTube description below for a free PDF of the Didache. It honestly won't take you longer than half an hour to get through or less. God bless. See you next time.